2023 was a great year for new game releases, so great in fact that there's lots of things that I didn't play. Because of this, and the fact that it would take a lot of work, I decided to quickly share my top 10 of the year. Once I play more of the stellar games that came out, I'll make a more in-depth list at a later date, but for now, here's a quick recap of the best games I played this year. Number 10, Atelier Rise of 3. I decided to play this game because I saw you could ride dolphin. I like dolphins. Overall, the game is cute. It's a super animated JRPG with pleasant characters and a fun combat system. However, it was also really confusing and had some harsh difficulty spikes that led me to nearly give up. But I pushed through and got to an ending that was quite wholesome. The game was fun, but probably wouldn't be here if I played more. Number 9, Advance Wars Reboot Camp. Sure, it's nice seeing franchises come back from the dead. This is a strategy slash tactic game, so pretty good gameplay, but what really surprised me is how much style was put into it. The characters were all memorable, and the soundtrack was unexpectedly awesome. It's not like a must play, but it is fun. Number 8, Horizon Forbidden West, The Burning Shores. These shores sure are burning. I played the base game earlier this year, and lo and behold, they dropped this expansion. It's really just more content, the story has good writing and twists that I expect, but the new enemies kinda suck, these frog guys are annoying. Small scale prevents it from being too high here, but for like 20 bucks, it was absolutely worth it. Number 7, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. This game is bursting with creativity. Pulling up on a Wonder Flower is like a kinder surprise egg, you don't know what you'll get, but it'll be fun to play with. I love new enemies like the Mamas, Missile Megs, and especially the Elma Ways. Plus a Wigger with roller skates? This game's incredible. I've really seen such ambition in 2D platformers, probably because I don't play many, but even though this game may not be inherently huge, the passion put here is palpable and it deserves all the recognition it gets. Number 6, Pikmin 4. Okay, these 6 are more than just good, they're all like outstanding games. Pikmin 4 being at 6 on this list is mainly because I'm not too fond of some changes named the lock on and the rewind time feature. The rest of the game is a pure sugary treat. Gorgeous areas, memorable characters, a pet dog, optional hard challenges, like you could hardly want more. The Pikmin community and all of its insanity has been blessed by this gift this year. Blessed by Dandori. Number 5, Xenoblade 3 Future Redeemed. My fave game of the last year finally got its expansion. To be honest, it didn't quite have the things I wanted to see in the story's expansion, but that's okay. I trusted Takahashi to get something good and he delivered. The nostalgia hit strong when you were seeing both Shulk and Rex growing up, and then it ran me over like a train when I walked into yesterday and heard the original theme for the original opening area in Xenoblade 1. The gameplay additions are great too. I love unlocking things through exploration, and some changes to the battle system were satisfying to mess around with. Plus, those credits were enough to make a man cry. Number 4, Fire Emblem Engage. It's my favorite franchise out there, and it's only number 4. Now sure, the story is stupid, but like, come on, the game is super campy and doesn't take itself seriously. Chill out. The gameplay though here is top notch. The break system and the emblem skills add so much depth, it's insane. The new characters here are exceedingly entertaining, and the old characters, the emblems, are integrated perfectly. And hardly anything tops the Power Ranger roll call thing that happens near the end of the game. It was thrilling. Number 3, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. The safe pick we'll be seeing on many people's lists this year. It took a while to hook me, but when it did, oh man. The vehicles you can build are awesome, more than the doubling size of the map is quite the thing to process, and adding back good, real dungeons with incredible unique boss fights is the one thing that was really neat in this game, and they sure delivered. But none of this really matters when you can mess with the Krogs like this. Number 2, Street Fighter 6. This was coming in my top spot for a while, but among other things, the price for the costumes 3 staggered me just a little. Anyways, this is my first experience with a fighting game at launch. Learning alongside everyone else the combos and watching the big events help me feel part of the community. What they've done in the game too is amazing. Their characters, from their designs, animations, even the way they walk is so well done. All new changes to the battle system make for a deep experience to ripe with player expression. Personally, getting to rank up and learning to play a character properly, Jamie in my case, was one of the most rewarding things I've gotten to do. Number 1, Octopath Traveler 2. This is somewhat of a sleeper hit for this year. It's not the type of game that's generally going to be super popular, but popularity doesn't equal quality, and for me in particular, it does just what I need from a game. The art style is beyond gorgeous, the score and soundtrack is beyond masterful, the battle system is refined and satisfying. It's also such a step up from its predecessor in every way. Besides some quality of life changes, the writing characters are so good here, and the party appeals much more like a party than in the first. Particio in particular is one of my favorite characters ever. From his first chapter, I felt this game's quality from the start. And then by his final chapter, without spoiling it, with all the shenanigans there, cemented this game as my game of the year for 2023. Also, the bosses are great. So that'll be my list, at least until I play all these games and return to go properly in depth. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know. And please subscribe, so I can have motivation to work on my videos. Bye!